Hey, welcome guys and gals. Glad y'all are jumping in tonight. I um, hope you're doing well with social distancing. It was a big shout out to everyone that jumped in on our Zoom yesterday. That was fun to kind of connect and see everyone's faces for a little bit. And so uh, be watching the group text and our Instagram page for more of those that will be happening because that's just a fun way to kind of break up AMI work and doing whatever it is around your house. I think John Hunter had like a 4,000 piece puzzle he had to get done by dinner. So we can definitely watch him do that again. But hey, let's jump in tonight. And I want you to imagine you're driving, whether you legally can or can't drive a car. I want you to pretend um, that you are driving a vehicle, okay? And you're going with your family. Maybe you got a couple of friends with you too. Um, but there's so many of you, you're having to take um, several different cars, okay? As you're going on a road trip, okay? And being the intelligent person you are, you have strategically positioned yourself to be in the cool car. So all the fun people you like to hang out with in your family are in your vehicle, or maybe just the least annoying are in your vehicle, okay? So as I'm thinking about this, I think as we go on trips with the youth group and in the church van, like I'm always driving the cool bus. So shout out to everyone that always rides in my van. But I want you to think as you're in this convoy of vehicles, which vehicle are you in line? Just based off of the, the details I've given you, are you the leader? Are you the second car? Maybe the fourth car? Maybe you're at the very, very back of the line. Just think about that for a second. Just naturally kind of where does your mind go? Being on a road trip, you're in control of the vehicle. Where are you at in the convoy, okay? Now, like on youth group trips, generally, I'm always the one leading the group. Um, that makes sense. I've planned it. I've put the thing together. I should probably know the destination. Therefore, I should probably lead. Now, if it's um, other things to do with my family, um, most of the time I have no idea where we're going. So in those instances where I don't know the destination, I'm probably just going to follow, okay? Um, but that's kind of the thing I think for all of us when it comes to following is that following can be kind of difficult at times because we all have our own instincts, our own ideas, our own plans. Um, I can go a long ways without having to go to the bathroom. Currently, Emily is pregnant with our second little one, and so she can't go more than like here to Conway um, without having to stop to go to the bathroom. So there's always that um, when you're traveling. And so as we think about Be the Change, that's kind of been our theme since Winter Retreat was um, God has called us to be the change. So how do we be the person God's called us to be? Um, in wherever we're at, whether that's in our family, <clears throat> not in the classroom right now, because we're not meeting in classrooms, but um, how do we be the change wherever God has us planted, okay? And so knowing those things, we need to be following the right people. We need to have the right people in our lives that are influencing us. We need to make sure we have the right people giving us guidance and direction, and we need to follow well. Okay, and what I mean by follow well is I don't know if you've ever seen a um, grade school line of kids, you know, like kindergarten, first grade, and the first five or six kids, they're always at each other's throats for who gets to be the line leader because they've been fighting it out. Now, there's also the kids that are in the back of the line, that's where I was growing up, is that I was part of the line, but I definitely was not following well because as the line was walking, I was looking off over here or, you know, seeing something and I'd get and the teacher would have to kind of herd me back in the line or I'd be looking at the other side and being not paying attention. So I was I was still very much part of the class, part of the group, but I was not following well. And so what I mean by follow well is as a good follower, you know um, where what's going on you know what the kind of the leader has in store because someday you are going to be the leader. So that's what I mean when I say follow well. Now, being that it is April now, um, in our Christian tradition, we celebrate a big event every year, um, usually during this month, okay? And that is Easter. And being on a church staff, I know personally I love Easter just because as soon as Christmas is over, our first staff meeting back, we kind of all take a deep breath and go, okay, let's get ready for Easter. Even though it's still four months away, four and a half months away, we're already prepping 
for Easter because we have multiple services. Usually um, our people will bring friends and family members, so there's a lot more people around. So we wanna make sure that everything is done well, everything's done right. Not that we're trying to put on a show, it's just that um, Steve, our pastor, always encourages us to pursue excellence. So we put a lot of work into Easter. Um, we also have our big egg hunt that is so exciting to, to put the work in on the front end and then to, to go out there and see all the kids being able to pick up the eggs. And we also do a meal with it. And it's just, it's a lot of fun and it's very, very rewarding. And it's also the time of the year where we celebrate um, Christ's resurrection from the grave. That's what Easter is all about. So everything, that is the center of what Easter is, and then from that comes spending time with family or eating another meal or um, giving back to the community, whatever that may look like. Now, granted, this year our Easter is going to look different, and so we're still kind of working through that as a staff to figure out, hey, how do we how do we do Easter distantly? And so uh, stay tuned uh, as we come out with more um, details on that. But but here's the point when it comes to Easter and the church and being a Christian. It's that Jesus Christ walked this earth. He was crucified, dead, buried, and he was resurrected, okay? And from that, we have this theme of follow, okay? Jesus said, follow me. We're going to actually look at that tonight in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20 of Jesus calling his first disciples to follow him, okay? <clears throat> and so you can follow along. It says this in chapter or chapter 1 of Mark, verse 16. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of Gal locking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throw a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come on, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat preparing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. Now, many of you may have heard this passage before. You may know this passage. You know, this is Jesus calling his first disciples and saying, hey, come follow me. Okay, but this is much more than just four guys deciding in their life that they're going to make a career change, okay? These, there's, there's something more happening here, okay? When Jesus sees these guys, you know, um, specifically uh, Simon and Andrew as they're out fishing, um, when he, you know, calls out to them, hey, come follow me, this was literally heaven coming to earth. This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This is when it, it all got real. And this is the, the beginning of the church. This is Jesus calling his, um, to some extent, you could say your, his first pastors to, to plant the church that we're still carrying on to this very day. And that's really, really, really exciting, okay? That a simple interruption in these guys' day led... Um, to what we now have as the church by just a few simple words of saying, come and follow me, okay? Now, what's interesting here is these guys' immediate and kind of what I would consider to be radical obedience, okay? In that they didn't question, they didn't hesitate, or according to the gospel, specifically here, Mark, these guys left what they were doing, everything that they had known. And they had probably been fishing with, uh, you know, like James and John, they'd probably been fishing with their dad, Zebedee, for years, learning how to do it. Um, and here they were, probably had maybe even their own boat and were had their own crew to go out and, and fish for the family business. And Jesus comes up and says, hey, guys, come follow me. And they leave that all behind, leave everything they had ever really known or had had worked towards, leave that behind to follow Jesus, okay? And when Jesus said, follow me, what he's saying here is, this is true discipleship. You know, if you will follow me, this is what full acceptance of my leadership looks like, okay? This is um, trust to the ultimate degree, okay? And I think that is so exciting. 
all right, that these guys were able to just say, I don't know that I could do that, you know, but these guys did. And so what? So what does this mean for us, Daniel? Why are you got us uh, watching a YouTube video on a, on a Wednesday night? What does this have to do with us? Well, I think that if we can understand kind of the, the deeper meaning of this text and use it a bit as a mirror to kind of see our reflection from this text, how, how would you see yourself? How do we see ourselves um, as Christians, okay? And, and I've, I've noticed over maybe the last decade or so, and I think this might have happened when, when Facebook first started. I'm, I'm not real for sure. It seems to be that's kind of the time frame, but that there is a lot of Christians, and I'm kind of guilty of this too from time to time, that are calling themselves Christ followers. And I think that's so, you know, knowing what we're talking about tonight to say, man, I'm a Christ follower. And those are some pretty powerful words um, when you understand this passage like we're talking about tonight, because I think this is a reaction to a lot of Christians calling themselves a Christian, but not acting very Christ-like. Because um, for a lot, when someone says, hey, I'm a Christian, what that's telling the other person is that I believe in God, I'm a good person, um, person, I'm a good person, and I go to church from time to time. Well, Jesus really isn't that much of a factor in their life. And that's why I think this Christ follower came about because it's like, hey, I'm a Christ follower. I, I do go to church. I do believe in God. I, I do feel like I, I am a good person, but I'm trying to do my best to, to live out this um, immediate and kind of radical obedience that we see in these four first disciples here. And so um, I know for me, and maybe for you as well, you'd say, I'm a Christ follower. And so my question tonight is, um, but are you really? Like when we really understand this text for what, it, for what it has, other than just guys doing one thing and now we're doing something else, but to really understand what that meant and, and what it means to say, I'm a Christ follower. Are you really, okay? Are you willing to leave it all to follow Christ, okay? Where is your complete trust? Not just during a, a time of a, a pandemic like we're, we're living in right now, but even on the good days when everything's going great, are we still saying, man, thank you, God, for what you've done in my life? You know, Are we still able to give Him the praise that He deserves, okay? As you think about this convoy of vehicles like we talked about at the beginning, if Jesus is in the lead, um, in his vehicle, are you behind following well? Or are you behind um, on Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waves going, man, there's a lot shorter way we can get from <clears throat> where we're at to our destination. Or if we would go just a little bit faster, we could get there sooner. Or if we didn't have to stop so often for people to go to the bathroom, um, we could do this a lot faster. Because if I'm honest tonight, <clears throat> I think a lot of times that's me. I, I don't have that immediate radical obedience that I think a lot of times maybe God maybe presses on our hearts to, to step into a situation or to reach out to a certain person. Um, I don't always do that, but I do hear the call that God has, has put out, okay? Uh, the same call that God extends uh, to you, to me, that he extended to his disciples when he said, follow me. Um, even in light of everything that's going on, I, I think we still hear that, okay? And this is a call that's for all of us. It's not just for a select few people. It's not just a certain group. It's not just the good kids, okay? God is saying to anyone and everyone, come and follow me. Because if you think about the guys, these four guys that Jesus reached out to, um, I don't know for certain, um, but these guys were fishermen. They were not um, deep, uh, probably not heavily educated. They probably weren't great speakers. They probably weren't great teachers, probably not even really good communicators to begin with. You know, I'm just making some assumptions here. But um, if you think about them, they weren't the most religious. They weren't the most skilled, but they were willing. Okay, and that's the beauty of the God we serve is that we have the ability to choose. Okay, and the classic saying is God doesn't call the equipped; He equips the called. And so um, I know that is very true in my in my own life. You know, when I felt my call to ministry, 
Um, I believe I graduated high school with a third or fourth grade reading level. And now I have a degree where I read for, or I have a career where I read for a living. So God is clearly at work in my life in a lot of ways. And so following Jesus is the foundation of what true discipleship is, okay? Following Jesus is giving up that control of our lives to say, you know what, it's not so much about what I want, but how can I be the change um, that Christ has called me to today? How can I be the change social distancing at home, for example? Or how can I be the change for my family? Or maybe even that one neighbor across the street, as long as this group's less than 10 and you keep a six-foot six distance, you know, how can I help be the change in those situations, okay? But if we're going to do that, I think we need to, we need to full send, all in, committed to what God has in store for us because it's His plan not our plan. And so as we move closer to this time of Easter, I wanted to, to begin by kind of talking about this idea of what it means to follow. And these next couple of weeks, um, we're going to look at a few other words that kind of go along with what Easter is all about. And so um, next week, we'll have another video. And then at the end of this video, we'll have some discussion questions um, that you as an individual, if you're watching this solo, can kind of uh, read and reflect on, or if you're with your family, you can dive into those as a group as well and kind of have your own little small group. And so I'm going to pray for us and uh, we'll get out of here. Father God, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all your many blessings. I pray that you would just continue to, to uh, work as we're going through this difficult time, Lord, and just help us in everything we do um, to just follow you and to follow you well, God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Thanks for watching tonight.